Hey there, YouTube fam. Patrick here from uh, Bearded Bastard Outdoors. If this is your first time on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so then you can uh, follow along and learn some stuff, some field crafts, some survival stuff. Uh, my name is Patrick. Uh, I am a retired Green Beret out of 5th Special Forces Group. And, uh, you know, I have this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, very high interest in survival and field craft skills um, that, you know, people for thousands of years before us have successfully been able to survive without the need for internet, telephones, uh, GPSs, all of these things, right? They've been able to successfully, I mean, wars were won with like next to no technology that made us the greatest country in the world. And so just for, just for an example, um, so what I do on this channel is I break everything down to, you might say it's a little bit overcomplicated, but um, we need to train for the overcomplicated because if we don't train for every scenario, then when we get into a situation where we're like, man, I wish I, wish I would know how to make a fire when I don't have matches or a lighter, this is the goal of this channel is to t is to teach you uh, those things so then you can increase your chances for being recovered should God forbid you ever come into um, a situation of duress. But so it, so again, hit that uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, whatever. So then you're um, notified for when the next videos come up. Anyways, in this video, I'm going to introduce to you how to read a map. Why? Because I know you got your GPSs, I know you got your Garmins, your Tom Toms, your iPhones, your Androids, Siri, all these things. All of these devices that can tell you point A to point B, your direction, it'll even tell you if there's construction on the way and any hazards. Got it. it Plan for alternate routes, all that stuff. But what happens when you don't have that? All right, another scenario, you can actually use a map to increase your odds of success. Let's say you're going hunting. You're going into the Rocky Mountains, you're going elk hunting. You can get a map, a topographical map of your area and be able to do what's called a map reconnaissance. Essentially what that means is you can see where the vegetation, where the vegetated areas are at, what the terrain looks like, where's the water sources, where's, you know, uh, avenues of approach, natural lines of, of, of drift uh, or egress, what have you, transition points. Um, everything that you're doing on your phone anyways, hunters use Onyx and all sorts of apps to do that anyways. You can do that on a piece of paper, laminate it. That way you have something in case of emergency when your device, your battery dies, you can whip that out and figure it out. Also, <coughs> excuse me, why is it important? It's, it, you know, I had a, uh, when I was in, when I was in special forces, I had a Sergeant Major, um, that said that you cannot learn the sexy stuff unless you master the basics. And that's always stuck with me because that's what separates, uh, in my opinion, that's what separates a special operations so, uh, soldier from the rest is that we master the basics. We train on the basic fundamentals of marksmanship, of, of close quarters combat, of this, of that, of whatever, right? The basic fundamentals of such so then it becomes secondhand nature. And then when we get put into an environment of which I have been in where we don't have running water, we don't have electricity, we don't have this, we don't have that, we are able to succeed despite those odds that would possibly hinder an, uh, somebody else. Um, that's why we learn languages of our area and, 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 and things like that. So then we can, we can navigate and communicate and build up that space. So then anyways, I digress. Um, can't, do the sexy stuff unless you can master the basics. When I would teach my team uh, sniper skills, um, I would not let them have a rangefinder unless they can judge distance to their target with a scope using the mill using the tactical mills or the mill dots on their scope uh, in order to gauge um, judge distance. Same thing with winds. They have to look through their scopes to, to judge winds before they could use a, um, um, you know, a wind meter. <coughs> they have to do all, you know, we'd learn all this math that we have to do in our head based off of the ballistics of the rifle. And when we can do that in our head or on note or on a pen, paper, notepad, whatever, and we can do that efficiently, then we can use ballistics calculators. Um, 
we reinforce everything that we learned and we just use it to in a, in a, in a new application. And so that's what I'm trying to do uh, again on this channel is to teach you the fundamentals, teach you the basics. And uh, thanks for listening to me this far. We're gonna we're gonna get into it um, into map reading. Um, this is this is just an overview of just like show you what a map is. I'm not, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but to discuss what a map is and basically how to read around it. And, you know, we're going to talk about terrain features and we're going to talk about what those squiggly lines mean. What do all the squiggly lines mean on a, on a topographical map? We're going to we're going to go over that. And then in, in other videos, you know, we'll we'll talk about um, uh, direction finding azimuths. Uh, route uh, planning, things like that. Okay. But before we go, I want you to remember uh, this acronym, Hidden Valley Ranch Salad Dressing. Okay. Those are your five major terrain features. <coughs> and those stand for, and those stand for hilltop, valley, ridgeline, saddle, and depression. Those are your five major terrain features. Then you have five minor terrain features, which is cliff, draw, spur, cut, and fill. Okay. You're not being tested on this, but just good knowledge to know. Again, and then as we move forward, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and hold your fist like so. Okay. I want you to look at your fist to help you identify the terrain features. So for example, this knuckle here, or any of your knuckles really, represents a hilltop, right? A hilltop, a hilltop, and then your knuckles in sequence like this represents a ridge line. So if we go back to the five major terrain features, so we have a hill, right? Hidden hill. And we have a valley, Whoop. right? Um, ridge line, all of your hilltops in sequence, ridge line. So hidden valley, ri uh, ranch, salad, a saddle, which is between the low point between two high points. And then dressing, depression, right here. The, the little bowl you make right here, okay? And then your five minor, cliff, draw, spur, uh, cut, and fill, right? We have cliff. We have draws going in between our fingers. We have spurs, which is the bumpy parts in between the draws. And then cut and fill, that's just... What it sounds like, like you're cutting through a mountain and then you fill in part of a mountain so anyways let's jump into it remember subscribe all right so some things that you need to know on the map that is absolutely critical is one make sure you have the right the right map of course the title there and then over here what you want to see is this is the scale this is the size of the grid line Okay, you got one over 100,000, one over 50,000, one over 25,000. Um, and why that's important is that from point A to point B is 1,000 meters um, at, this, at this ratio. Okay, don't mind my candy. And then, of course, your addition series. That's not really critical for, any, for anything that we're trying to do today. And this is your legend. What we want to talk about is we want to talk about the colors. Okay, different colors of a map. Okay, you have, I'll go ahead and post the different colors, but we got red, we got brown, we got green, white, blue, okay? Green, obviously, for vegetation, brown brown for contour lines, elevation and relief. Um, red for man-made, black for man-made structures as well, blue for water, okay? And then, of course, down here is your scale. Again, we're at 1 over 25,000. And then what we want to know is we want to know what is our delineation to north, grid north to true north, okay? And what we have here, um, the GM angle is three degrees from grid north to magnetic north is three degrees. So what that so what does that mean? In order to convert magnetic azimuth to grid azimuth, you have to subtract three degrees and to convert from grid to magnetic, you have to add <clears throat> three degrees. And that comes into play later when we start discussing um, how to find an azimuth and plot, uh, plot, a, plot a route. So when we're looking at a map and we see all of these squiggly lines, okay, 
this is contour of the terrain feature. And the first one that we're going to talk about, of course, is a hilltop. A hilltop is essentially closed circles, right? Everyone see that? That converge onto a high point. And this number here dictates the distance from ground level. So this is 200 meters above ground level. A valley then, one thing to look for on a valley is the color. Okay, the white indicates low ground. And typically in a valley, you're going to have a water source. Now a valley is just where you have two sets of high ground that convert that, you know, converge into uh, an area where water can collect and water can flow through. So what we have here is we have this high ground here based off of these contour lines. And then we have high ground here, which is based off these contour lines. So what that would indicate is that water is flowing in these directions. And this is not a very big valley, but it's a valley nonetheless. So the next in our major terrain features that we need to discuss is the um, ridge line. Stand by, let me get that out of the way. There we go. Okay. Tripod getting in the way. Is we need to discuss ridge line. Now, ridge line is nothing more than a series of hilltops. So what we see here is we have a hilltop here, 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 and then we got a little bit of a terrain difference. We got a hilltop here, 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 and then here. Okay, before we start seeing a descent into the valley that we identified earlier. And we'll see that. Now, while we're here, it would be a good opportunity to discuss saddle. That's the next one, Hidden Valley Ranch saddle or salad dressing, right? So a saddle is nothing more than a, than a low point between two high points. Okay, so there's a saddle, and there's a saddle, there's a saddle, and this is even a saddle. And of course, we can always use um, our brown lines, again, showing contour and relief to see how far that is. So this being at 150, this line right here, and if we reference our, our contour interval down here, and if we reference our contour interval of 10 meters, which means when we go back here, and we're at where we're at, 150. This is 150, well then, that would be 160, 170, 180. Now this isn't 190 because this is on the same plane. 150, 160, 170. Okay. And then we drop back down. 160, 170, 180. That makes sense. And finally, on our list of major terrain features is a depression. A depression is a closed circle, much like a hilltop, but it has these dashed lines projecting inward. And that's it. So that is a depression. And that's just a, um, as it says, here's another one right here. As it sounds, that is just a, uh, a hole in the ground. Okay, so now that we discussed the five major terrain features, which were again, hilltop, valley, ridge, saddle, and depression, now we're gonna discuss our five minor terrain features. And the first one we're gonna talk about is a cliff. Now this is kind of hard to see, so let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Remember, our brown lines indicate contour and relief. Okay, it shows us our elevation. When our contour lines get very close together to the point where they kind of just disappear into each other, it might not be the best example, but it shows a rapid drop or cha rapid change in elevation. So that would indicate a cliff, either a cliff or a, uh, or a cliff face or just incredibly steep. And there is another, another one ascent basically kind of, sort of, right here. Where we have, where we have our hill, 
okay, closed in circle. And then we have down, down, drop, okay, for the train track to go in, and then we have up, 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 okay, this one being more drastic, of course, than that. So whenever you see contour lines where they're just so close together, it shows a rapid change or a sudden change in terrain elevation. It's indicating again, very, very steep or a cliff face. So that's what you would be looking for essentially. So here's something else that a cliff might look like where you have your contour line and then you have these lines darting out. That is indicative of a cliff face as well. The next minor terrain features will be draw and spur. To identify a draw, basically looking for the high ground. So here we have again a closed circle indicating our hilltop. And then coming off of our hilltop, we have V shapes pointing towards the high ground, and this and it has a water source. Those are indicative of a draw. The terrain in between two draws, where the V's essentially point away from the hilltop, are the spurs. So if you think about it, this is low ground, this is low ground, this is high ground. Okay, so again, a V going away from the high ground would be a spur. The V going towards the high ground would be a draw. This one does not have water. The V is pointing, away, and then, well, actually, okay, here's your hilltop. Here's another hilltop, so here's, an, here's a saddle. Okay, but we have our V's here going toward, pointing towards the high ground with a water source. That's another draw. And then we have on our ridge line, V's pointing away from the high ground, which is our spur. And then here is your cut. <coughs> Excuse me. Now here's a good here's a good example of a cut. Where's my pen? There it is. So a cut is a man-made feature, of course, um, for highways or rail stations or whatever and if you notice the contour lines here obviously paralleling the roadway and the contour lines facing away from the roadway and whereas this map <clears throat> doesn't appear to have any fills in it it would just be the opposite so where a cut the lines face away from the uh, from the roadway here a fill the lines would face towards That's the only difference. A cut, the lines face away, and a fill, the lines face towards. Well, there you have it, folks. You just uh, learned the five major terrain features and five minor terrain features and how to identify them on a map. And uh, hopefully you got some value out of this. Um, I know it's not the sexiest thing on the planet, but it is incredibly important to learn, incredibly important to know, because if you can find your location on a map then you can self-recover. You can save your life. You can save the life of your loved ones. I can't stress it enough. Um, I hope you never need to use it. I hope you never need it. Uh, but it's there now as a tool for you to uh, to use if the situation does, does arrive. But remember, this takes practice. So if you're going to go in somewhere you're not familiar with, get a map of the area study the map, do your map reconnaissance, figure out where your population areas are, your major terrain features are, your minor terrain features. Look for uh, highways and uh, roadways, things of that nature. Um, and now that you understand contour lines and how those look on a map and how those work um, through the terrain features, of course, then uh, you can, uh, it'll, it'll help you in a future video when we talk about routes. Um, it'll help you to plan uh, how to get into an area and how to get out of an area, and um, if you have to, uh, if you have a prolonged, unexpected stay, uh, it'll help. It'll help you um, 
help save your life is, is the intent. So anyways, I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, again, please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Um, let's grow this channel. Um, got, got a lot of good stuff planned. Got a lot of good stuff coming. Uh, it's a new channel, so still got room, still got room to go all the way to the moon. So anyways, again, I'm Patrick, Beery Bastard Outdoors. Catch you all in the next one.